Okay, so one of the other factors that can affect the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction is pH. Um, so again, along this axis we've got pH, remembering there is no pH zero. And again, up the side, rate of reaction, and just like for temperature, that could be mass of a product, volume of gas produced, could be one over the time taken for a reaction to happen. Now if you remember, in our temperature one, and you can go back and look at that if you need to, it goes a very sort of gentle slope up and then a very plummety one down. With pH, what you tend to get is these very narrow uh, curves and different enzymes have different optimum pHs and it pretty much depends on what kinds of bonds they've got. Again we're talking about successful collisions happening and the shape of the active site being absolutely complementary to the substrate and if they're complementary then the substrate's colliding at a particular angle, it's fitting in beautifully, lowered activation energy and release the products. And anything that kind of uh, disrupts that shape of the active site will pretty much um, slow down these successful collisions. So if we kind of look at our graph, and we looked at sort of here on our graph, that enzyme is still working pretty well, even though, and again, with pH and temperature we can talk about optima, so either side of the optimum, if it's only deviating a little bit, it's still working pretty well. And actually, experimentally, if you shifted the pH back to its optimum, it'd, it'd increase again. So this is kind of... Um, this would represent an inactivation. So it's just slightly less successful because the active site has slightly changed shape but it's not actually preventing a collision it just makes it harder perhaps alters the angle at which the um, substrate has got to fit in again down here at these points down here we're talking about full denaturation So full denaturation is where you're getting no reaction at all. It's not that it's going at a slightly slower rate, but it's still going. And if you leave it long enough, it will go to completion. It means you've got no reaction at all. Nothing is going to happen. You're not going to get successful collisions. You're not going to get any products. There's nothing to measure to get your rate going. So what causes this? What is it about pH that causes this? Well, if you remember, We've got some bonds that rely on charge, and particularly the hydrogen and ionic bonds. So these ones that rely on either having a plus or minus, or a delta plus or a delta minus, might be disrupted by pH, because what causes uh, acidity, particularly, is the concentration of hydrogen ions. So hydrogen ions are charged particles and if you put more in then they will repel any plus charges and they'll attract minus charges towards them and that can disrupt the bonding. So pH, nice narrow graph, optimum in the middle, either side we've got inactivation of varying degrees only when we get to the bottom of the graph do we get that full denaturation where the ionic and hydrogen bonds have been so severely disruptive that we've got this change in the active site again. And again, you need to be talking about shape of active site. Slight changes, big changes. So. This is a slightly different situation from temperature where if, you if your 
operating something at a lower temperature than it should be. So say you've got some food in the fridge, the bacteria are growing quite slowly because they're not able to do their enzyme reactions quickly because there's not enough kinetic energy around. If you warm them up, they'll their enzyme reactions will happen faster and your food will decay faster. If you heat them up and denature them, it doesn't matter if you cool them down, they're not going to be able to destroy your food anymore. That's the principle behind pasteurisation, raising the temperature, killing the bacteria because their enzymes are all denatured. You cool it back down and stick it in the fridge and it's not going to go off. So. We can use pH in fairly similar ways, so I'm sure that in year seven you made a fruit salad at school, that's what the cookery department seem to do now, um, and you will have put a citric acid fruit juice in, orange juice, lemon juice, squeeze a lemon, um, lime juice maybe if you're particularly posh, um, and that citric acid will have stopped the fruit browning. What causes fruit browning is enzyme action. So. That's also one of the applications, if you like. Pickling things in vinegar stops them going off because of the acidity. Um, okay, that's pH.